Decklist, and that's going to be Spiritomb, Ross. Yeah, Spiritomb is um, Spiritomb's quite nice. It's got that ability. I know you rang a Spiritomb pin yesterday, yesterday because yeah. of it. <laughs> it turns off abilities of basic Pokemon V, uh -oh. like for instance Rotom. What's uh oh there, Joe? I've seen both of Alessandro Bax's Pal pads in the prize cards. That could be a huge issue. You play two copies because it's so vital to not prize them, <laughs> and then you prize them both. As we're getting into our Masters Top 8 game here, this was your community choice, and we're kicking things off with Christian Hodas, who has a Mew EX start and a nice Buddy Buddy Poffin to find some Comfey. Not too bad. Comfey's going to be coming out quickly, but I think you're right. That Spiritomb turning off Fleet-Footed from Entei, and more importantly, turning off that Rotom V ability yeah. is what you're going to be looking for. Also worth pointing out, yes, there is Pidgeot here, and yes, there is is Iron Hands, but it's not going to be like we've seen in some of the stream games this week because with no Future Boost Energy Capsule and no Iron Crown, Ampu very much does fall short of mm. KOing a Pidgeot, which is upsetting, but that is just the way it is. Maybe we can do some setup damage and then a big free by swing afterwards, mm -hmm. but we're, we're way away from that yet. Yeah, Sable, I can do some of that shenanigans, even just taking two with arm presses, really solid in this matchup. Taking away your opponent's Pidgeot EX, the namesake of the deck, really, is a, a really big bonus, and I'm sure that's also going to be on the mind of Christian, who is wasting no time finding that Spiritomb on the first turn. Oh, that is interesting. There was a question here. You always want two Comfey turn one. Do you instead go for the Spiritomb and, you know, only get one and hope it comes out later? And the answer is, yeah. Yes, you do. You go for the Spiritomb. It's too good at stopping your opponent. And a nice free retreat pivot was Christian's lead. So we're going into the Comfey here and can immediately begin flower selecting, of course, the Lost Zone box players want to reach some critical thresholds. Four in the Lost Zone allows you to spit innocently. Seven in the Lost Zone allows you to unlock Mirage Gates, which is one of the crucial selling points of the deck. And as we work towards the late game, also keeping an eye on Sableye plays. Once we hit 10 cards in the Lost Zone, it's going to be huge here. Yeah, those are the key numbers for cards in the Lost Zone. And we just see a pass with one card in the Lost Zone. It's not ideal. But you do have that spirit tomb down, and that is um, that's a good start, frankly. Alessandro straight away is going to get the bad news. Not only are you getting nothing from this Hisuian Heavy Ball, but you can immediately see that both of your two <laughs> pal pad are in the prize cards. That's adding insult to injury, that is. Yeah. You get nothing, but also it's literally adding insult here's to injury. Here's the bad news, and here's the bad news. <laughs> <laughs> bad news is enough of the grab, but the bad news is both your pal pad are prize. <laughs> At question. least you know straight away, so you can play accordingly. Also, the team yell cheer, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that that's... is crazy. And a penny for if you are doing that shenanigans where you're picking up. There are three penny in the deck, which helps very much, but one of them being prized is not Ooh, ideal. Look at this. Straight away, the Eerie going to take a look at Christian's hand and try and take away some crucial item cards. The switch cart seems like a really good choice. Getting rid of lost vacuum so that Christian can't reach seven next turn also seems very valuable. You've unfortunately seen that your opponent at least has Chorus and can pressurize. We do have Nest Ball and we have Fire Energy. There's the chance to call for family with Pidgey if you wish, or you could still use... Oh, no, you can't use Rotom. So I imagine we will end on Pidgey here. And that is upsetting because with a Comfey in the active and a Chorus's experiment in hand, chance of a chance of a spit innocently with Cramorant is incredibly high mm. next turn. And that means you will be saying goodbye to that Pidgey and letting your opponent go up by a prize. It's not ideal, but sometimes you have to let it happen. It's going to be Nest Ball for Pidgey, so possibly Alessandro is going to be attaching fire. We'll see if they're going to try and protect it for maybe some attackers later down the line. But it is going to be still committed to the active, maybe finding some basic V Pokemon now from this call for family. Yeah, and the thing is, that Spirit Tomb in a lot of matchups, you're like, oh, that Spirit Tomb's really annoying. Guess I'll KO it and turn my abilities back on. <laughs> it's not really what control does. And you can with stuff like Entei, but it just becomes a little bit awkward. That It's only, what, 60 HP? But it's actually quite a lot sometimes when the deck <laughs> isn't really made for attacking. When you do 10 damage a turn with Fang Snipe. Yeah. <laughs> it's not ideal, Joe, frankly. We're going to see things pass over to Christian. Alessandro's still got two V Pokemon down with those abilities that are being shut off. So it's clearly in Alessandro. Sandro's game plan to at some point get rid of this Spiritomb as Christian is going to use the Artisan to grab Cramorant, I believe, with this Comfey in the active plus the Colrus, which we know is in hand. Oh, yeah, you can definitely to get to four and start pressurizing Pidgeys. 
OK, so there goes the Cramorant down on the board. So that's going to hit 110. That's going to KO the Pidgey. You will, I mean, wait, there's already a board on the Comfey, isn't there? Yeah, we're happy with yeah. that. So everything's already there. You've got the you've got the Flower Sled to McComfey, puts you on two. Coruscant Experiment puts you up to four. You've already got the pivot established. So that Pidgey is going down. That is definitely happening. The question is, what else can we do before we end the turn with the Pidgey going down? Well, let's see what Coruscant provides. We have some easy loss zone choices. I at least saw a Buddy Buddy Poffin that can get loss zoned. Yep. Getting us up to three cards, and this Colrus will get us to that fourth. It's an interesting thing where the Super Rod is obviously a very powerful card, but at the same time, you know that it could get hit with Eerie at any point, so that's also going to find its way into the Lost Zone. We can then select our way to four, and obviously you Colrus first to get more information before weaving in this Flower Selecting, but this is also trying to get to that critical break point so we can spit innocently. It's unfortunately going to have to be Mirage Gate up against Switch Cart, so the Mirage Gate is held into the hand. Does Christian want to play out any more balls? search cards, maybe utilize the Nest Ball while it's available. But no, it seems like Christian is happy enough to initiate the prize race here, taking the first KO with a spit innocently. And we're passing things over to Alessandro, who really doesn't have much in hand here, as far as I can tell, is going to go into the Ente. Counter catches, Super Rod, Bravery Charm, these are not handy. You can already see how impactful Christian's use of Spiritomb has been this game. Yeah, that's Spiritomb. I mean, even right now, you could use Entei's Fleet Footed and just at least get one extra card. Does make use of Christian's Artis on there, though. Yeah. Going to grabbing yourself a basic Pokemon. I think mean, it's better than nothing, but this is not the start Alessandro wanted. He's got three Pokemon down, and two of them are Pokemon Vs <laughs> with abilities that don't work. Yeah, and it's a Buffalo coming out, just so you don't draw into it by the looks of things. I suppose it's at least a high hit point single prize Pokemon. But yeah, no Fleet Footed, no Rotom. And if Christian can target the other Pidgey, Alessandro is going to be completely out of options. And this deck only really gets by because you can draw so many cards at the end of each turn. And, and that, you're seeing why. Yeah, and it's so hard. You had to give up the Pidgey. You had to give up the Pidgey to go and grab your basics. But now you're in a super awkward position. Now here goes Colrus's experiment. It's only really Prime Catcher that's going to get you there now that a supporter has been played. But oh, how beautiful would a Prime Catcher be right now, Joe? <laughs> it's unlikely. Yeah, but I'm nice. sure it's on Christian's radar. You could also get an attack in with Radiant Greninja still here, especially because we are ramping. We did just lost zone a water energy, though, so I'm not sure how available that's going to be. Oh, we did hit the Prime Catcher from the Colrus. Oh, my word, that's amazing. So now, that's easy. Prime yeah. Catcher, bring up Pidgey. Yep. Bring up, I mean, there's no question that this is the play. This is going swimmingly for Christian. And you don't even have to bring up the Cramorant. You bring up your Comfey, <laughs> yep. use Flower Selecting, retreat into Cramorant, and then you even get the extra card as well. So smooth for Christian, getting up to seven cards in the Lost Zone whilst taking the second Pidgey out of play for Alessandro, who has really just got to hope that the top decks can help him here, because Christian is going to start flying ahead. Debating possibly using a Mirage Gate here is Christian, I think. No, just going to, oh, thinking about benching a Raikou but wanting to hold on to the options right now. Certainly you know you're in a up. strong position, so just got to think about what you can utilize before possibly your hand gets disrupted a little more. Yeah, you don't necessarily need to overextend when yep. the game's going this well at the start. So there goes the KO, and it's not just two prizes for Christian, it's two Pidgeys. Both the yep. Pidgeys are gone. There is a Super Rod in Alessandro's list. So, oh, speaking of which, there's a Super Rod. <laughs> Super Rod's been in hand for a while, and it's not been usable until now, really. And we did see a... Arvin off the top, so maybe we could ball search back a Pidgey here, and you can still take Forest Seal Stone uh, to line up a Pidgeot play for later. But you're still hoping that you can just dodge more Gust here yeah. and dodge Greninja as well, unless you get a hit point buff tool. The good oh. news is you've still got the Artisan for your oh, opponent to get the first Pidgey. So now Arvin will actually be able to get you the second Pidgey. Although, I mean, the funniest thing right now would be Christian using Greninja to KO both Pidgeys. Oh. Four prizes, four Pidgeys, and that would be absolutely devastating. Does look like we're going for a rare candy and a Forest Seal Stone, so... Yeah, I think Alessandro will basically pack up the cards if this Pidgey goes down again, because yeah. otherwise you go for things like hit point buff tools or additional Pidgey. 
to protect yourself, but the hand is so poor that you just have to hope that there's some relief here and Christian doesn't have another insane turn. No, now in terms of water energy, we did see one go away. There's three yeah. in the deck. You need two on Greninja in order mm -hmm. for it to work. Now, Countercatcher brings up that Spiritomb. We yeah. pass to Christian. What can we do here? Is there any way we can actually get the Greninja attacking? Because gusting-wise, there's one boss's orders in the deck. Yeah. It's not that likely. Yeah, I don't think it's in the hand. Christian's hand is huge, though, so we could be missing it could be access to their own Forest Hill Stone as well, let's not forget. So there is potential to flower select and work towards it. You can attach retreat into Confey and get at least a selecting in. Yeah, that would We're absolutely have a look. work. Yeah, there's We've... still a couple of water energy in the deck. So there is, there's still the opportunity to use Radiant Greninja. Yeah, seven cards in the loss zone means that Mirage Gate is absolutely on board. You would need Mirage Gate for a water and something else, and you would need a way to get the second water, whether that was attaching it manually or yeah. using a second Mirage Gate. Yeah, and I think that's on Christian's mind right now. The Artem was failed. Oh, there is Forest Hill Stone in hand. So and maybe we Ryko. can construct something here. There goes the V-Star Pass. So what are we going to get? We need Greninja. We need water energy. All we need Mirage orders, Gate. I think. I think, it, I think we're going the simple route. I think just Boss's Orders and Cramorant is going to be what Christian's identified here. I mean, yeah, that is it's simpler than Greninja, let's yeah. be honest. But There's I, upsides of getting the additional 90 damage, but it's not as important as just dealing with Pidgey here. No, I think you're right. Go for the guarantee. Get Boss's Orders. Bring up the Pidgey. Free prizes, free Pidgeys. And although both got recovered last turn, only one hit the bench. Now the third Pidgey comes active. We <laughs> retreat the Spiritomb with that darkness and energy. And you were right, Joe. Alessandro picks up his cards and says... Pidgeot control without Pidgeot is not a game I want to play. Let's go to game two. Yeah, no Rotom draw, no Entei, and no Pidgeots meant that Christian was really easily able to breeze through that first game. Pretty much everything went their way. So much early aggression meant that the Pidgeys were not safe at any point, and the lock established as early as turn one from Christian seemed really impactful. Really impactful, and since we got a break, I've got a bit of an update for you. Kim Pabega has actually won wow. in top eight. Quick work. Uh, all we're hearing is his opponent conceded ah. and they didn't play i don't know why that is sometimes <laughs> well I, I, there's a million different yeah. reasons but especially an spe especially an spe so for whatever reason kim's opponent has conceded kim is into the top four and my caster prediction i know it's not all about me joe <laughs> but right now my caster prediction started to look pretty nice yeah that's great for kim we saw them on stream <laughs> uh, just in the last round playing some great stuff and no surprise to see them still going deeper into the tournament no matter which way uh, they still may have just even had a good matchup and the opponent wanted to concede and just save himself some time. Well, <laughs> speaking of good matchups, Freya, shout out to Freya doing awesome work out there. Uh, Christian has won game one against Filippo. Filippo scooped game one as soon as Christian got a Lugia V-Star ah. with two Archeops in the discard pile. Wow. So um, Filippo basically saying, I don't think I'm going to win when Lugia hits the board. Yeah, I think there are some builds of Pidgeot that will try and respect Lugia and some that just don't. And I think Filippo is playing one of those lists that kind of just doesn't. No. Not many Giacomo, not many other Disruptors. Bouffalant's really your only way of removing energy, and that can be recovered by Mist anyway, so yeah. you can protect yourself. So, yeah, it looks like that's going to be a good matchup for Lugia. It's how it got to the finals last weekend. It might be making another deep run. I mean, as we are at the moment, there were two Pidgeot Control in top eight coming in. Both of them are one game down as it stands at the Ooh, moment. Yeah, we could be clearing all the control out <laughs> in top eight, getting ready for a top four where everyone's trying to take prizes. We'll see what Alessandro Sandro has to say about that. They are a game down, but they still have an hour on the clock. And that is a great thing for the control matchups. In a best of three, 50 minutes, when you go a game down, you're really it's kind bad. of thinking that you've got to go like the clappers if you're going to get close to winning two games. But with over an hour on the clock still, I think he can still get there. Yeah, absolutely can happen. Half an hour per game before time gets called. It is doable. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but it is doable. And Alessandro, I mean, look, you've made top eight. You're clearly a phenomenal control player. So you know the matchup and it's not like you've never played against Lost Zone before sure. this is a matchup you know very very well and one of the things you know we, we saw that when Alessandro conceded that first game I can't win without my Pidgey mm. I've got a third Pidgey down you've KO'd it right let's go to game two this is how well I know this matchup yeah game one was literally just hard mode for Alessandro they had no access to the power pads which would have been impactful later down the line yep. and they had such a poor start so with that combination pick up those cards give yourself as much time as possible it shows that Alessandro knows that in this best of three 75 minutes, we just have a much better opportunity for these controlling decks. As uh, we do see some prize cards, uh, 
smuttering of energy for Christian there. Fortunately, they're early enough in the prizes, we can access them again. But we are getting into our game two here, and it's a Luxray V lead for Alessandro, who also has that Hisuian Heavy Ball to kick things off. This time, there's something for him. There's a Radiant Charizard, if he so wishes. And this can be another great way that you can actually remove lots of energy from play <laughs> as you work towards the late game uh, by taking out some of these V Pokemon that get gated onto. Yeah, it is worth noting there are two counter catcher out of three of Alessandro's in the discard, in the prizes, sorry. Yep. And obviously, you're going to go down fairly quickly in prizes against Lost Box. So th those are as good as prime catcher for the majority sure. of the game. Having two of your free prize, I think mean, less than ideal would be a euphemistic way to put it. Yeah, fortunately, this deck can actually take prizes. So there's a chance we can access that counter catcher again at some point. But it's really worth noting that it's not going to be for a little while. Let's see if Alessandro has any other ball search. I'm not sure if there's a way towards any Pidgey here. Well, there's a double turbo energy to the Luxray V. It's really awkward that you can't cash in on Roton even on this one turn before Christian possibly could get a Spiritomb down. But no, attach pass. That's not ideal. You say possibly could. There's a Buddy Buddy Poffin. We're seeing Spiritomb. It's not in the prizes. It is in the deck. And firstly, we saw Christian go for it immediately in game yeah. one. Secondly, we saw Alessandro basically lose because it was on the board. Uh-oh. Um, I don't like saying many things are certain because players know their decks better than us. They can surprise us. But I feel extremely... Extremely confident Spirit Team's coming out here, Joe. Yeah, you'd have to have a really specific line of play lined up to not go Spirit Team here. As you said, Christian prioritized it immediately. So <laughs> I imagine that's still going to be the case in this game number two. It's an even better start for Christian, who already has a Confe in the active, so can begin using that flower selecting, ramping their loss zone. We could end up even having a Spit Innocently this turn again and immediately put the pressure on Alessandro to get hit point buffs on this Luxray or start using Penny. And we know how poor the opener was just an attached pass, so initiating that pressure immediately could be huge. Even just ramping the loss zone as much as possible, working towards that seven so you can unlock Mirage Gate and your multiple prize attackers. There's just a lot of good options for Christian already here, and that's just for off of their first action of the turn. Yeah, if Christian is able to get a Spit Innocently combined with a Spiritomb on the bench, yeah. with Alessandro's poor start, that is going to be absolutely backbreaking, especially after having won game one. It is, as predicted, a Comfey and a Spiritomb, no surprises is here so that Rotom is going to be turned off the fleet footed on Entei is going to be turned off Alessandro's the path became a lot more difficult a lot rockier so to speak <laughs> the path to the peak is not clear no certainly not and Spiritomb's the last thing you want to see as Alessandro here and it was the very first action of the turn for Christian. It's a huge tech card. It was my pin badge in day one, but it's waited until day two to come out. <laughs> I know, that's just really annoying, right? Yeah, I tried my best. But it shows that it was a good medical, right? Oh, it was very good medical, absolutely. But you follow the meta very closely, Joe, as do our top players here, and this isn't a surprise to anyone. Well, not to the top players or the people who follow the game closely. Spirit Tomb was a good call coming into this weekend, and it's one that people are aware of. It helps so much against Pidgeot control, and, well, like here, this yep. is a matchup which it's winnable, but not great. And then with Spirit Tomb V, it becomes so much better. Now, there's three in the Lost Zone yep. off of a Chorus' experiment. Can we get one more Comfey to go up to four and then pivot into a Cramorant? Oh, the only Cramorant's prized! Yeah, we have to also find that Heavy Ball. But I think just getting on that quest towards seven is still really helpful. Christian's really valuing the Water Energy, which might indicate that they want to weave in Greninja early into this game as well. That could be a target from this Nest Ball here, even, based on the hand. If you can get a turn attachment banked onto this Greninja, it can make your life so much easier next turn as well. There's another water energy still in the deck, so you can attach one and still conceal one away. And I love this because Pidgeot Control doesn't play free Pidgey. Like all the lists I've seen, they play two Pidgey. Yep. That's standard. And you saw Alessandro play Super Rod when two Pidgey went down and then got one of them back. So what I'm saying is you're pretty sure Alessandro is only playing two Pidgey. Yep. So if they play one, you KO with Greninja. If they play two, you KO with Greninja. <laughs> and then they can't get Pidgeot out. And we saw how game one went when Alessandro couldn't get Pidgeot out. Yeah, we've got to see Alessandro combine Pidgey with Bravery Charm <laughs> just to really <laughs> hope for the best. <laughs> But even then, Christian plays Lost Vacuum, so it could still be done. As there is going to be a Water Energy discarded for a couple more 
with Radiant Greninja here. Can we pivot into Confei and get to four cards in the Lost Zone? That puts you in such good shape. Yeah, we do we have can. a switch. That's going to put us Chorus plus one switch out away from getting a masterful Greninja turn lined up for Christian. And of course, they still have their turn attachment, which could go onto that Greninja, which looks like a great option to me. And there is a water energy in hand specifically, yeah. which is huge. Of course, one of the awkward things about Mirage Gate is it has to be two different energy, clearly designed for Giratina V-Star. Yeah. So you have to get one water and another, and then the second water has to come from somewhere. Dropped a switch car off the Comfey. That means so, it's a good card. Yeah, it must have been <laughs> something good. Um, I can't say, I'll be honest no. with you, the hand's out of shot. Oh, it was a lightning, oh, could have been anything, shuffling his hand. We're already, uh, yeah, growing his hand size pretty nicely from Christian. I think there might be a Mirage Gate in hand, you know. Yeah, I, I think we're very close already for Christian for next turn. I think one of the only missing pieces might just be a Chorus, uh, because there was a long debate over Lost Zoning the Poke Gear or not. That was, like, part of their Chorus earlier on, their only debate, but... We're nest balling out a Roaring Moon. This is another way that you can really pressurize the opponent here. Yeah, You're Roaring four. Moon. That can get you to six. I don't think you get to seven this turn. <laughs> I wasn't even considering that there could be a KO here. I mean, if he could. Well, we weren't considering it because there's so much you need that it's technically possible. Mm. No, okay, okay, there we go. So we're pressure, Yeah, we're pressurizing Roaring Moon to win next turn with no additional Pokemon coming down, but also you're concealing the fact that Greninja can come out all next turn very easily. Yes, absolutely, because, yeah, you've got the energy in hand. Energy, Mirage Gate, boom, yeah. you're there. <laughs> Whereas if you attach the water energy, you're kind of saying, like, hey. I'm eyeing this up, yeah, for sure. Let's see what Alessandro can hit off the Poke Gear. I think it's just an eerie. But you can use this to get rid of the Mirage Gate. This could be good. That could be fun. I mean, there are there are Pokemon in hand. There's, yeah, there's Radiant Charizard, there's and Mimikyu. Mimikyu. Yeah. So you can play Pokemon down, but it's more a case of, I don't want to play Pokemon on the bench that I don't really want. Because Mimikyu's great at blocking some decks. Mm. It is not great at blocking a deck that plays Kramer and, and Sableye. I think we're going to have to eerie and Fang Snipe here. You oh, can, here we go. Yep. Christian's going to hand over the entire hand. It's lots of Pokemon and lots of energy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that, so that Fangsnipe's irrelevant now. <laughs> extremely quick decision. And, yeah, I mean, well, were they the only two options? Yeah, they are. Because so they were still great options. <laughs> no. It's, yeah, Fangsnipe is just doing 10 damage and no secondary effect right now. But getting rid of a Mirage Gate and that Lost Vacuum, which is a great way to get up to seven in the Lost Zone, and get rid of that Bravery Charm. Yeah, true. It's, it's just enough right now. Wait. Alessandro doesn't even want to do the 10 damage. <laughs> Why are you not doing the 10 damage there, Joe? Well, you might need to trap it later on for a while longer. Yeah, to be fair, there is a reason not to do it, so that you're not in range of KOing it and essentially letting it off the hook. Yeah. Either way, we're back, and you're not probably KOing that. You're not going to 7-hit KO that Comfey. <laughs> you're probably not doing that with your Probably not. Let's see the concealed cards from Christian here. Can get rid of a Lightning, so the Water Energy is still available. Was that Mirage Gate Switch, I think? Oh, that Definitely would... Mirage Gate. I mean, that's... Um, we well, can start selecting. The good news is you can potentially Greninja. There's the bad news is... Now. Sorry, Ross. Well, no, I'm just going to say the bad news is there's no real target. Well, the whole point of Greninja is it's great at going out of Pidgeys, but there ain't no Pidgey. There's a Charizard and the Lux Ray. Honestly, right now, I'd quite want a stadium so that you could put real pressure on that Lux Ray. More switch cards hitting the Lost Zone, which probably tells me we have access to more. Yeah, it was a switch from the concealed cards. Let's have one more flower selecting. This is getting us to six. We still need that Chorus to help out. Yuri may have just about bought Alessandro a turn here. Oh, that Artisan would have been Let's lovely, see. but his boss's boss orders. orders. Yeah, you that's see not going to do it. Yeah, it's the only one in the deck. You have to keep it. We'll hold on to that, certainly. And it looks like... Somehow, Alessandro is just hanging on right now. Gets another top deck. Still needs so much, though. Needs to start building up this board in such a way that you're not just falling into a Radiant Greninja, swinging those Pidgeys straight back off the board as well. And that Kramer being prized is really annoying because you could be putting so much pressure yeah. onto that Lux Ray with that Kramer. And the Bravery Charm would prevent a KO. And actually, there's only one Lost Vacuum in the list. And it's already been eerie away, so... Yeah, you'd have to frenzied gouge through it. <laughs> and there are risks to that. 
What was the top deck for Alessandro? Well, the way he's playing with his hand means it's not much. Yeah, Pidgeot EX does not help. No, it's a Pidgeot EX where there's no Pidgey down on the oh, bench. Can we draw? Oh, no, we still can't even draw from Ente. <laughs> no. Nope. Spiritomb as well. Spiritomb yeah. says no. Oh, wow. Well, at least you can fang snipe. You can hit Mirage Gates. You, yeah, got to hit Mirage Gates. I mean, you imagine. You're a bit scared of boss, but not as much as Mirage Gates, especially when you see it combined with water energy. That's terrifying to me when I yeah. want to get my Pidgey. Mirage Gate is 100% what I'm going for there because there's water energy in hand and also there's nothing on my bench I'm that worried about being bossed right now. Right. Maybe an turn or two there would be. Like if I had a Pidgey on the bench maybe i think about the boss. For the Ooh, end. Chorus off the top for Christian. That's nice. That'll get to seven or over seven. Yep. And also we can start digging and finding more powerful plays here. We still need to move. Oh, is that Prime Catcher? I think it is Prime Catcher. Yeah, some more ball search, Super Rods in there. I think there might be a Mirage Gate as well. It at least means you can pivot your Confe that's currently in the active position and attack with your Roaring Moon EX. No, it's a Heavy Ball and a Super Rod. I was mistaken as there isn't a Mirage Gate. Heavy Ball then means that the one Sableye and the one Cramorant will continue to chill out in the prize cards for now. Christian valuing other Pokemon instead here. That's so awkward. You're never, nobody ever really plays more than one Hasuian Heavy Ball. That is a hard one of. So with that having been used, Sableye and Cramorant, which are at the top of the prizes, are essentially not available here. So you need to start attacking with something like Roaring Moon, frankly. That's what you need right now. Like but you Christians. even got rid of your Arters on. Yeah. And um, you lost your lost vacuum to get rid of the Bravery Charm. <laughs> Sorry, I keep cutting you off. No, but there's so many things about Roaring Moon that are annoying right now. Going to lose out on Iron bumble, uh, Bundle, but I think we do find another Mirage Gate here. So can you... You can Prime Catcher, maybe KOing Radiant Charizard while setting up damage on Luxray V or setting up damage on Entei. It depends how aggressively you want to spend these switching cards. You still want to keep an eye on these for when there's later game more wild plays. Instead, yeah, the, so the Greninja's not going to get into the action this turn unless we see Super Rod as well. Yeah, there's two out of your free water energy are now unavailable. There's Rescue Board, so now you could gouge through the Luxray, which might be your best choice. I mean, the thing is, generally speaking, frenzied gouging, you're like, oh, no, i got 30 HP remaining on my two prize Roaring Moon. Oh, that's so annoying. But what's Alessandro doing 30 damage with right now? <laughs> yeah, nothing. Which is absurd to say, but, I mean, maybe Magma Basin energy onto Entei, but Magma Basin's prized. Yeah, it looks like, as expected, Roaring Moon is getting powered up alongside this Radiant Greninja. Thanks to, I believe that's Mirage Gate number three yep. for Christian. Only one more available for the entire game. It's yeah. not in the prizes, though, so it is in the deck. There's the rescue board. I believe that was off the last flower selecting. So we can, or I think it was the concealed card, actually. But yeah, it means we can get into the active and deal with this Luxray immediately. Going to fail this Buddy Buddy Poffin quickly and get into the action. You can go patient and just swing for 100 if you wish. But we're not patient here. We're no. just going to frenzy gouge. Sometimes you hold off on this so that you can gouge through a Pidgeot. But when you know you have Greninja threatening those Pidgeys already, it feels pretty reasonable to just take the knockout now. <laughs> Absolutely. We do have an update. Constantine has gone and won game one elsewhere in our bracket. So Constantine's up game one. Christian's up by game. And Kim has already won as Christian's up here. That is all four games updated with where we are up to now. Let's see what Alessandro can come up with. Entei in the active, not much still, just looking at the hand with despair, really. Not much live. Is that an Ultra Ball? Yeah, going to get rid of Mimikyu and Lost Vacuum. Neither card being that helpful nope. at this stage. So she's going to at least find a Pidgey. Do you... It's awkward, because, like, yes, you want a Pidgey. Right? I was going to say, do you want a Pidgey? Obviously, you want a Pidgey, right? It's Pidgey control. You want a Pidgey, but you know that your opponent has got boss's orders you didn't get rid of it earlier yeah and you know that your opponent has got an energy on greninja so it's potentially just a mirage getaway for takuma greninja but your opponent has multiple ways to go after that pidgey yeah i mean i obviously don't love it but what else are we doing here <laughs> we got to get something done that's my point like yeah. i don't like doing it because it's probably not going to last but what else are you going to do not get pidgey Christian's just going to carry on churning through the deck by the looks of things. Has another Colorus now. We'll see five additional cards. Just putting themselves in a much better and better position as we go. Super it's odd. an awkward Colorus, though. Lots of good cards in that five. Including a Water Energy and a Super Rod. Yeah, might have to just get rid of Forest Seal Stone at this point. 
Maybe that's your least valuable card. <laughs> it's weird to think that getting any card from your deck is your least valuable card. But um, keeping your bench space open for something other than a V might be weighing on the mind right now. Yeah, if you keep Forest Hill Stone, you are also committing to playing a Pokemon V on the bench yeah. at some point. Which is exactly Raikou V in Christian's list. Well, yeah, that Raikou. I mean, to be fair, Raikou's a decent attacker against a lot of the cards that we're going to see in Alessandro's deck. Like, it's it's good against Pidgeot instantly, uh, oh, it's, even. It certainly is. Christian taking the time. Just going to get rid of Colorus and hold on to the Forest Hill Stone. That's also very reasonable. Yeah, I do um, like this. I feel like just gouging again seems really fine here for Christian. You are giving Alessandro a couple of free cards, but I'm not sure if you're afraid of Alessandro having much, to be honest. The yeah. only other thing you can think of is take a slower approach and, well, you could even, maybe, can you Forest of Stone prime catch the Charizard and take Pidgey and Charizard out this turn? That would be the crazy turn. <laughs> That would be fun. We do see a Nesbol coming down here. So if this is for Raikou... There's one Water Energy in the deck still. Yep. So yeah, we can do the combination if we can... Oh, so the Raikou's in the deck, is it? So we can Nesbol for it now. Then Super Rod, Forest Seal Stone. No, just going to be a fail search. So we're not going for the double KO here. Unless we already have other pieces and we're rodding stuff back. Do we have to retreat this Roaring Moon just for rod targets, perhaps? Christian's piecing it together like we are right now. <laughs> yeah, it's an awkward one. We do see a Lightning Energy discarded for Greninja to use concealed cards. That's two extra cards. We didn't see what they were. Christian is, is not doing us any favors letting us see those cards. Yeah, would have been nice. Raikou's well, in hand, Prime actually. Prime Catch is there. Okay, so Raikou's in hand. And Prime Catch so, is yeah, also in hand. So yeah, we have the hand. play really opened up here. I think you definitely go for this line. Love it. The Radiant Charizard is, of course, weak to water. So you can take a two prize KO here with the Radiant Greninja. We're going to see a Confei here as well. Water versus something else. Feels more like a two. You, like you've got to keep water for your turn attachment, I think. Iron, Iron hands. hands. I'm yeah. cool with losing Iron Hands at this point. You're yep. taking it. You're ahead enough on the prizes. That that's what Iron Hands does. It it really skews the prize race in your favour. But you're going to be up for nothing. You're probably going to be okay. Do we have? Okay, so here we go. So this has to be for the last Mirage case. Got to yep. be. Yeah, and that's going to be the Forest Hill Stone. The deck is pretty thin. Yeah. Could be a little careful. I mean, I think we're happy. There's rod in hand, surely. Yeah. yeah. There's the rod. I think it's just for the one energy that we concealed away. You could have retreated out of the Roaring Moon, but you want to keep that threat open to you. You're just going to get the one and then manually attach this water that you've drawn into via flower selecting. And by the way, next turn, you can just frenzy gouge in the Entei in oh, this yeah. game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this so, is the maximum pressure whilst removing the only draw power that Alessandro can construct here. It's one card off the top to keep you in this tournament. Yeah, I said that Pidgey wasn't going to last, unfortunately. We are Christian. out of this tournament. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> There's, the, There's the concession. Christian Hodas wins two games to zero. That Greninja double KO was just too much to deal with. Phenomenal stuff, really, from Christian.